Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, community call. Um, today we have uh, several things to cover. Uh, Lanida, if you move to the next slide, please. So we're gonna give a brief intro to the monitor service in case there's anyone here that doesn't know about the service yet, uh, they're new to us. Uh, then we're gonna discuss about the World Bank monitor dashboard. In particular, Leonidas from OpenAir is going to tell us uh, how uh, the entire pipeline goes from uh, provide to monitor. And then we have uh, with us uh, Katie Bannon from the World Bank that uh, went, is going with Leonidas through that process. And uh, we'll discuss uh, her experience and uh, uh, what they expect from a dashboard and so on. And uh, at the end, I'm going to uh, quickly close with uh, the new indicators that we have the dashboards and the ones that we're working on for the fall. Okay, so let me start. So the, the idea of offering a monitoring service of why a research performing organization would like to monitor uh, is so that uh, they can make decisions in a way that is evidence-based, uh, timely, consistent, and re replicable. So in order to do that, uh, the first step would be to, as we call it here in the catchy way, know, know thyself. So to understand uh, the resources that uh, you put into the output that comes out, the collaborations, the visibility, the impact you have, and different aspects of interests, such as one that is of um, uh, a lot of interest lately, which is the open science uh, uptake. Uh, this leads to an, uh, Tracking all these measures leads to an understanding of uh, how things work in uh, your uh, organization, especially as it relates with uh, everyone else. Uh, so the, the impact pathways become more clear, opportunities uh, for growth, from improvement, and in general insights are gained from um, the, the large world of, world of data that is available to us. And uh, this allows, in the end, the organization to position themselves, make the decision, uh, and so on, uh, in order to invest in uh, the research activities that are in an efficient and uh, profitable way. Um, besides decision making, I'm also we have also added on the slide reporting and storytelling, because these are, although it's not the main goal, there are two additional. Uh, attributes that uh, are required from uh, a monitoring service. Uh, next up, we have why uh, open air uh, monitor in particular. Well, here um, we emphasize the fact that uh, open air is built by the community. We work very closely with the community to co develop indicators and uh, provide things that are relevant. As uh, this uh, nice quote says on the side, not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted. Uh, I love that because it's really the approach, right? When you have so much data available, you have to pick and choose um, what to show and in which way so that it's uh, meaningful. Uh, of course, we're also about uh, open science, open data, open methodologies, uh, so that whatever we do is transparent, can be replicable, and it is clear and inclusive. And uh, the open air graph, which is what the monitor service is based on, aims to have a very wide coverage of the scientific domain, linking uh, different uh, research products with projects, organizations, and so on. And of course, it's fully embedded in the EOSC infrastructure. So um, I briefly mentioned this before, but the approach uh, that we take, uh, can you go one back, please? Thank you. Um, which uh, 
can be seen both in the ways that the indicators are built, but uh, in fact is in the entire pipeline and Leonidas will emphasize where uh, in a bit. Uh, so the idea here is that we need uh, the tracking and evaluating of research activities and open science uptake, if this is of interest to a particular organization, to be well data driven and relevant. So we, we work very close with the community to make sure that we pick uh, data aspects that are of interest. Um, comprehensive and uh, granular. So you can both see the entire world, world but also zoom in in uh, particular uh, areas of interest. Uh, automated and timely, of course. Uh, sustainable, so we can keep tracking in the same way and repeatedly and uh, trustworthy, which comes from the openness, transparency, and replicability of uh, the methodology and the data sets. Uh, this leads to our dashboards. Do I need the next slide? Uh, so there, actually there are two monitoring saves open air, open air monitoring the observatory, uh, just to mention <laughs> the, uh, the observatory as well. So monitor has three, three types of dashboards on-demand dashboards for institutions, funders, and research initiatives. And each of them is tied with a very friendly open air expert that uh, populates the dashboard automatically from the open air graph, but then works with you closely to guarantee uh, the data quality of uh, what is shown in the dashboard and uh, the indicators and so on. And uh, that's it for the introduction. Now I'll pass the floor to Leonidas. Thank you. Leonidas, you're muted. Yes, thank you, Joanna. Before I continue, I would like also to thank uh, Katie Bannon from uh, the World Bank that uh, she was uh, kind enough to join us and uh, share her experience with uh, our collaboration in creating the and also evaluating the uh, dashboard for the World Bank. So, Uh, we will continue with the, this community call by presenting uh, a few details regarding the monitor dashboard and the, especially the data quality that uh, we check and evaluate with you in order to, to have uh, the best uh, result in the institutional dashboard. It's very important to, that's why I'm noting, to have a, a, a good collaboration and constructive collaboration during this phase or while we create and uh, create the dashboard and also check and validate the data quality. Uh, that's why I'm uh, displaying this as a tuned years that uh, we work together, we collaborate together in order to, to build and maintain the monitor dashboard. And that is what uh, we, we have done as long as with all the institution, also with the World Bank. Okay, let's start and see the big picture now. Uh, in Open Monitor, we have the institutional dashboard. This is the workflow, the pipeline that uh, we start from the bottom to the top in order to reach the institutional dashboard, the dashboard. Uh, and as you can see at the bottom, we start from the open air graph where we have the data that has been ingested for the specific organization. And this is the part that we will focus uh, from uh, for in this presentation from now on. So what is Open Air Graph? Let's start with uh, the basic. Uh, infrastructure of open air where we get all the metadata and the information in order to create the 
in order to get the output in the moment of service. It's a collection of metadata that describe objects, research products in the research life cycle, and of course, the relationships among them. We collect information from around 70,000 trusted data sources, and these metadata are further enriched with other, with other metadata and links that are provided by either end users, which has, which can, we, who can provide links from scientific products to projects, funders, communities, or other products, enriched with full text mining alg algorithms through from open access from full text in uh, from open access articles and also from uh, research infrastructure infrastructure scholarly services that are bridged to the graph via open air. This is a slide uh, showing the infrastructure in a glance that uh, the hardware that uh, open air use the heart of uh, open air graph and all of open air services that uh, we use in order to have the open air graph provided to you and also all our other services. I won't go further enough to present you about uh, getting the numbers, but we'll see it in the presentations after the, the end of the community call. So, we're talking about data quality. What exactly do we mean? And what can go wrong, for example, in an institutional dashboard? Uh, I have a few examples to indicate the examples, which I found we have in a few cases in institutions. And we will see the reasons what a, a bill, uh, behind this issue that may arise. First of all, we might have relatively small numbers of research products, so publications, data sets, software, or other research products. This can happen due to several reasons. First of all, we, we might need to have a disambiguation of the institution's different names. We may have an issue with the, the repositories, metadata records, during the aggregation, the institution's repositories, metadata records. For example, there may be missing mandatory metadata fields of the research product type. And of course, the registration of the institution's repositories sets, validates, and then reaches the affiliation information. The registration is, uh, has been uh, is done via the provide dashboard. We will get uh, more details in the next slides. And of course, the data set affiliations come, come from the institution's data sources that are registered and aggregated by OpenAir. A second example that the have come has also come in. Uh, few number of cases is that uh, the, uh, there, was, there was missing information, there was missing funding information regarding projects from European Commission. This is, happened due to the fact that the, the funders that provide the, this information must interact with open air and provide this information for their funded projects and the respective institutions and organization in order to have this information linked to the institutions. And of course, um, there is a, might be some integration issue in open orgs. So how to improve? How can we improve the data quality? There are two stages. First of all, regarding the data sources of your organization, before these are entered, are ingested in the open air graph. Here we have the registration part the, of uh, the data sources that has been is done through the provide dashboard. We have also the compatibility with the open air guidelines in order to register 
your data sources to the provide dashboard. And the second part are the data sources that are already ingested in the open air graph. Here we have the disambiguation via the open org, the disambiguation of the names of the institutions, of the organization, of the different names. And also we have the step of improving the compatibility level with the open air guidelines. If, for example, the repository has been registered a few years ago and uh, is not compatible with the latest version of the open air guidelines. So what are my data sources? Someone from an organization, from an institution might ask. Well, the answer is pretty straightforward. We have the institutional repositories that may contain literature, data, software, or maybe, of course, other research products. We have the CRIS systems and any uh, journal that you might have that, that an institution might host. How can I register my data sources? You can register your data sources through the pro in open air so that they are ingested in the open air graph through the provide dashboard service. The prerequisites for this registration is that uh, your metadata, the metadata records of your repository should be exposed via the OEI PMH protocol and also they should be compatible with the open air guidelines. Why should I register my data sources? Well, first of all, we have your cloud. When there is your entry, your gateway to EOSC. If you are compliant with the latest version of the Open Air Guidelines, then you are automatically, you will automatically be onboarding the EOSC portal catalog and marketplace integrated platform. Additionally, your metadata, you will have improved interoperability in order to meet the latest IT and repository standard, standards. Your content will be more contextualized with links and relationships among all the research outcomes and entities, more flexible by using different and improved voc vocabularies and embedded the, in the R&I ecosystem. You will be aligned with the open science mandates and standards and there is also support for well-established metadata schemas. Of course, being compatible with your, registering your data sources and being compatible with the open air guidelines is the road to is the road to fairness. If you are compliant with the open air guidelines, then you are also fair enough. And finally, you will have accurate and qualitative metrics in the monitor service and the institutional dashboard. So what are the open air guidelines? It's a common metadata framework for exchanging minimum metadata information. Through the open air guidelines, we provide orientation to the organization in order to define and implement their local data management policies according to the requirements of open air. And also through the open air guidelines, you expose your research products via the OAIPMH protocol in order to integrate with our infrastructure. Open Orgs. Open Orgs is a platform, is a service of open air on disambiguating the organization names and status. First of all, we should say that uh, there is a, an information ambiguity about, this, about the organizations, which is distributed in all the data sources that open air collects information, collects metadata from. What do we mean with information ambiguity? That they may have, that the organization may appear with different names, legal names, acronyms, short names, alternatives, and others. And of course, the organization structure may not be so clear. Faculties, departments, different branches and detachments appear. This disambiguation of the inform of this information is performed through open orgs where you can deduplicate the organization names and also identify the parent child relationships of your organization. The activity pillars of the activity pillars of open orgs 
is the automatic suggestion of duplicates, where when you enter the platform, suggest you different produce new suggestions for the, the different names through the various sources if various sources have been registered in open air and have your organization name with a different status than an existing one also you can enrich the metadata description of your organization entities improving the discoverability and you can manage the duplicates, which is a uh, that cannot be performed by machines. It's only humans can carry out precisely this task. Of course, we are here to assist you. We have the provide dashboard validation and registration guide through our support email. And of course, we can have dedicated calls with our experts for any information or help you need in each phase of the process. So thank you very much. Now we'll give the floor to Katie Bannon from the World Bank. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, I think you were going to share my presentation. Yes. Um, so while you're pulling that up, uh, my name is Katie Bannon. Um, I work at the World Bank. Uh, for those of you who don't know about the World Bank, we're a large multilateral institution that lends money um, and generates knowledge um, for development in all our member countries, which is many countries around, around the world. Um, I work in the IT department, um, but my department's more the, the I part of IT. Um, we manage the libraries, archives, digital publishing, records management, um, and also implement a lot of the access to information um, program. So um, I have two slides. The first one is to give a little bit of context, and the second is to jump into some of the details that we've um, run into while we try to build our dashboard. So first of all, um, for us, like why the open air monitor dashboard? Um, and the main goal is that we're just beginning to explore how open science could apply to the World Bank. The banks invested a lot of money in open data, open access, access to information. Um, and now open science is the big thing. Um, we're trying to understand like, how are we doing compared to these open science standards? Like, are we already meeting them? Like, where are our gaps? Um, so based on that information, we'll be able to hopefully decide how to move forward. Um, so, you know, reliable data is really essential to persuading management to um, make changes in some of our implementations. So we're really hoping the dashboard can provide you know, clear, reliable data about how we're doing currently. Um, in terms of how we're connecting the dashboard to kind of other institutional initiatives, um, the World Bank has, World Bank Group has a data roadmap um, and they report on this annually to senior management. Um, and one of the indicators on that roadmap is the existence of a public open science dashboard. Um, so that was just added last year. So we're hoping by the end of this year, we'll have something to show. Um, we also produce a, an annual report, a public annual report on the access to information policy implementation. And we're hoping that we can maybe include some of the data from the dashboard in that report. Um, secondly, like why open air instead of building it in-house? Um, so it's extremely, at least from my perspective, very cost effective to leverage the technical and intellectual investments made by open air and not rebuild it ourselves. Um, I, that would take us forever and we really don't have the staff or the skill sets necessarily to do that. Um, another big appeal is the very transparent methodology. So it makes the dashboard very defensible um, within the institution. You can always, people might argue about the numbers and you can always refer them to exactly how those numbers were arrived at. Um, and I really appreciate also that it's really walking the talk of open science and, and showing the work um, and being transparent. 
Um, and of course, you know, it's always good to have you know, a third party running the monitoring because it's, it's very hard to self-monitor yourself. You're just inherently biased and it's very hard to, to see yourself or know thyself, I guess. Um, another big appeal has been the use of by open air of standards. Um, and the World Bank, you know, does follow some standards, but maybe not all the time. So working with open air has really made us pay a lot more attention to these standards, which really helps us become more interoperable with others. So that's been also a big um, draw. Um, and lastly, just having these comparable indicators, um, not that we want to like compete with others, but our senior management does seem to respond to seeing how, you know, how are we doing compared to others? Um, for example, for access information, uh, there's a group called IADI, and they create an annual publish what you fund index that ranks all these development agencies um, about the transparency of their aid flows. So every year, you know, we get to see, oh, how did we come in um, in terms of the ranking? Um, so that's very helpful in terms of like, um, spurring action on the part of the institution to see if you're doing well, you need to make improvements in a certain area. So I think having some sort of comparison to how we're doing to others is great. And not that we want to compete instead of collaborate, but just it's 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 good to, to have a little healthy competition. It, it helps institutions, I think, um, move forward. Um, and of course, we really welcome the opportunity of this community to really learn from others. We're, we're hoping that others are um, finding solutions to some of our struggles and that we can learn from all of you. Um, okay, uh, the next slide. Um, so our experience building the dashboard and really a huge thank to Lee Nidas who has suffered through many, many questions for me, often repeated questions. Um, he's been great helping us walk through some of these details. Um, so these are some of the sources that we've been trying to integrate into the dashboard. Um, the first is the Open Knowledge Repository, and that's been the easiest because it uses DSpace, um, which is really set up to be an open access repository. Um, it was already registered in the, the Directory of Open Access um, Repositories. Um, by default, it was already following the OAI PMH metadata standards, um, and, and, and the data about its content was already included in the, um, the dashboard. So the pending tasks for that um, is really, we need to validate the data to make sure like it, everything that we have is actually showing up, it should be. And we need to add um, something on our side so that open air can count the downloads um, that we get in, open, in the open knowledge repository. <clears throat> so that, that was the easiest um, and the, the least work um, to integrate the open knowledge repository. The next, um, a repository is documents and reports. So this is a humongous repository. There's more than 400,000 documents um, in this repository. Um, it really is the archive of um, public documents and is our official disclosure mechanism um, for the access to information policy. So we do have an API for that. Um, but it was not aligned with OAI PMH. Um, so we worked with Leonidas to map our API to that standard, uh, at which point we also discovered that, you know, only some of those documents had a DOI. So we're now trying to figure out, you know, should all those documents have a DOI or do they not need that? We noticed there's some duplication with the Open Knowledge Repository. So that's also making us reflect on how to best use these two repositories. Um, and a kind of larger question that's come up is like, where do we draw the line about what should be included in the dashboard? Because the document and reports repository has everything. It has procurement records, it has you know project records, it has board minutes, um, it has a lot of gray literature that's not necessarily peer reviewed formally. Um, but it's kind of working knowledge, like toolkits, best practices, those sorts of things. So our challenge is really to like decide what should we include, like what is what is the content that's relevant um, for this dashboard. So I'd be very curious to see how others 
if others are facing this challenge and, and how you've um, drawn that line. Um, next for journal articles, uh, we have lots of very energetic researchers at the bank um, and they often submit journal articles and don't we don't know where they've submitted their articles necessarily. I mean, their manager and unit knows, but centrally as an institution, it's sometimes hard to track. Um, they often do submit um, the author prepared manuscript to our open knowledge repository, but they often do not. So one of the things that's difficult then is to figure out like what articles have are affiliated with the World Bank. Um, and that's led us to start looking more closely at the use of ORCID IDs for our authors. Um, I think we'll also be looking more closely at that open organization um, registration tool that we need us just mentioned, because we really need a, a clear way to associate um, uh, from a meta metadata standpoint, our content with the World Bank. Another thing that's come up is, you know, sometimes there's a, a final article that's published in a, maybe a paywall journal, um, but a preprint was published in our open knowledge repository, but there's not really a link between them. Um, and so this linkage between kind of pre-versions and the final published article it's also just been like confusing to us in terms of how do you link them together? How do you count them? Um, that whole relationship has been something that we're trying to understand better. Uh, next is the data sets. Uh, the World Bank has a development data catalog um, and has been investing in open data for a long time. Uh, so they do have an API, but again, we needed to do some mapping of that API to the OAI PMH standards. And so that's still a work in progress. Uh, we've also been very interested in exploring tools that can, you know, kind of automate the assessment of how a data set complies with FAIR standards. Um, there's, I think OpenAir has some tools available, and I think we're going to explore how to use those um, to assess the FAIR um, you know, level of the data sets of the World Bank. Uh, next, the research code. Uh, so a lot of researchers at the bank use GitHub um, and they occasionally use Zenodo, but not too frequently. So we're just in the middle of planning how to scale up, how to store research code, um, how to capture it, archive it, um, and how to align the capturing of that code with, again, these standards, the OAI PMH standards, so that we can accurately count it and connect it with the data sets and the, the text um, research. Uh, a challenge for us also as an international organization was figuring out like what license to apply to some of these this research code. Uh, we recently reached a decision that we could use MIT and BSD3 licenses um, for research code. But this opened up a whole discussion about like what exactly is code. There's a very wide range of code. There's kind of just instructions about how to use code. Some people write their own code. There's like software. There's an entire range of like code. So that's something that we're also trying to better understand. Um, one thing that we've been looking at is NASA recently um, produced a, a policy on scientific information. And in that um, policy, they have outlined two different, well, many different, well, two big categories of code. Um, and I think that's going to be helpful to us in understanding about how to treat different categories of code. Uh, next, other research products. Um, again, this is similar to documents and reports in that we're trying to understand more precisely what should be like counted in the dashboard. We have lots of final research products, but we also have lots of like raw material products. So we have a lot of digital archives, we have a photo catalog, we have maps, like we have these other assorted like things that are more raw material rather than final products. And so we're trying to figure out how to best include those. Um, lastly, the impact. Uh, this is gonna be great when we are able to measure our impact better. Um, Researchers are obviously very interested to see who's downloading their stuff. Um, so we're very interested in capturing that information better. But we realize that to do that, we need to improve our metadata and make it all capturable um, in, in open air so we can accurately measure 
downloads from these different sources. So we're excited to continue working to improve our metadata in order to provide researchers a better view of the usage of their content. So I think those are all of the things I had to say. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, Maybe there's something in the chat. Okay, thank you, Katie. Um, that was uh, very interesting. And just to add that uh, during that process of uh, working, you were, your team worked together with Leonidas and uh, the team has really uncovered many things for us also to improve. So the collaboration is uh, very fruitful in both directions. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. We really enjoy working with you guys. It's very nice to hear. Uh, okay, let me uh, wrap it up with the new monitor indicators. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, so we have uh, time for questions. Um, so we worked on uh, three types, um, three groups, four groups of new indicators uh, recently. First of all, just to motivate it is what we said before. We, we tried to capture all the aspects that will allow um, the organizations to make informed decisions. So the themes of indicators uh, that we captured, if you please move to the next slide, uh, are the following. So we have uh, funding where we discuss, uh, where we have indicators for grants and projects, then we have research outputs uh, that has to do with the different kinds of uh, research products, but also the fruits of science they belong to, uh, if they're multidisciplinary and so on. Then we have open science, where our target is to cover fairness, access rights, and access routes, different journal business models, article processing charges, and plant nest indicators. Then we have collaborations, both via project participations and co-authorship or co-creation. For creation, I mean, you know, for data sets and so on. And then we have the impact indicators that right now we're working on uh, downloads and citations and also sustainable development goals. Uh, this is kind of, uh, all, almost all of this is already available at the dashboard, uh, but we're, go we're working to finalize everything in here by September. Uh, and then we'll move on to different areas if, if there is a demand for that. Okay, so the first thing we worked on is, uh, okay, so, <laughs> and we break this down by different, different fields of interest in order to uh, allow the user to have a granular zoomed in view of uh, what is happening so as to identify uh, weak spokes, really understand and analyze the data. Okay. Oh, yes. So the first thing we worked on are uh, composite open science indicators for uh, organizations. So we created three composite indicators. The openness score, which is the average share of open access uh, research outputs for an institution. The findability score, which is the average share of research output with a persistent identifier. And the fairness score, which is the average share of research output with metadata completeness. In the methodology section, uh, one can see what met metadata completeness exactly means, which parts of which metadata elements we chose, but it's basically based on uh, EOSC. Okay. Um, so something of interest in this case is, for example, the trends for this type of scores. Um, you can see here on the left uh, chart, for example, that uh, the openness score is pretty much consistent over time for the particular institution that we're looking at. However, there are some dips. So using the link to Open Air Explore that we have available for the dashboard, some, one could go and look at the research outputs that, that are closed access and are causing the dips at different points in time and see uh, what happened there uh, and why, for example, in 2020, there is such a deep when there's such wide use of repositories. It's just an example. 
And on the right, you have the trend for the findability score. Um, and here one can see that although there was a short increase uh, at the beginning of 2000, and then it dipped down again, but now it seemed to have reached a, a perfect findability for the last few years at least. Uh, so all research outputs in the open air graph have a PAD. Um, and we're working on other breakdowns of interest. So um, now that these indicators are ready, we will work with uh, all of you that have dashboards in order to see what, what other breakdowns of interest there are. And now, as you may know, the, there's a, the open ed now has a SDGs classification system. And you can go and see in Open Air Explore the publications by SDG as well. Um, not the entire graph is, uh, is classified, but a large chunk of it. And we're classifying more and more publications as we go along. Um, but this allowed us to start building indicators in terms of SDGs for the dashboard. For example, if you go to the next slide, please. The most important thing is the uh, publications by SDG that you see on the left. So for example, this institution has uh, clearly a lot of things in the medical, clinical healthcare, since uh, good health has uh, a big spike in terms of publications, but actually it's interesting to see that pretty much all SDGs have some coverage. Uh, on the right, you see a graph of the, of the downloads and uh, we're including other ones now, such as downloads per publication, uh, the characteristics of these SDGs in terms of uh, these SDG related publications in terms of openness and so on. Um, and uh, that's all. Uh, the last thing to mention is that uh, we have included an additional dimension of analysis of how to break things down, uh, which is the fruits of science. So now OpenN has an FOS classification system. Again, you can go to explore to the link that is there to see the different uh, classes. Um, so for level one is the things that you see on the left. So natural sciences, engineering technology, medical and health sciences, agriculture and veterinary sciences, social science and humanities and the arts. And then there's a level two, which is what you see on in bold and then level three. So this allows uh, organizations to really track um, which areas, uh, which disciplines they're contributing to and which are perhaps some areas for improvement. Um, okay. Next slide. Here are some breakdowns that we have included. Uh, the first one is the trends on the FOS level one over time. For example, uh, here you see that proportionately uh, social sciences are becoming more popular in this institution. And on the right, you see the number, uh, the most popular uh, level twos uh, by the number of uh, gold open access publications. So clinical medicine, health sciences, education, and so on. Um, now this makes it uh, um, possible for a university uh, to really fine tune the decision-making by the discipline. And notice here that we didn't say by the department because uh, it's not necessary, you could have cross-disciplinary work, right? That different departments are working on different disciplines. Um, okay, next slide. Um, here on the left, you have a breakdown within FOS1 of FOS2. So in the second column, you see that within engineering and technology, the biggest share for this university is in nanotechnology. And on the right, you have the different open access flavors or colors. Uh, by the FOS level one, seeing, for example, that um, for engineering and technology, proportionately, uh, there is more, more uptake of using repositories and so on uh, than for natural sciences, proportionately, uh, given the number of gold publications. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, let, let's keep 
um, to the last slide. Um, next. Okay, so these are the, we have some upcoming indicators in terms of uh, APC citations and so on. Uh, we'll send the slides, I just want to leave a few minutes for questions. So the indicators that we saw today, this will be available in the dashboards in May and uh, the new ones in September. And please, if you already spotted something that you would like, for example, you want something as a share as opposed to as an absolute number, uh, we'll be happy to incorporate it uh, immediately. And in case there's someone here that doesn't really already have a dashboard, this is the website on the right on uh, how to get started. Thank you. Any questions? So we have two questions in the chat. One from uh, Liliana about the, the the monitor dashboard for University of Belgrade, uh, referring to the data that is available uh, in the in the dashboard, and is asking when the data will be updated. The last data in production is from March twenty twenty three, so uh, there must be so, so a little bug. Uh, with the cache, so we'll update it immediately. Uh, unless there's an issue with the affiliations from the university. So Leonidas, how do you want to tackle this? Meliana uh, speaking, I could <laughs> detail the, my question because um, uh, we are in the process to include this open air monitor in the official website of the university hmm? because the data there on the for the university is quite nice at the monitor dashboard and it is public but the last data was is from uh, 2021 Let and for sure the, the yeah. organization and everything is clear and uh, arranged and updated okay uh, could you please send us details on the repository so that uh... no no there are quite a, a lot of repositories are harvested there because the, this is the big university so it includes more it, 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 it includes more than 15 repositories. So, and they are, the data are visible at open air graph. They are okay. also for the 2022, but at the monitor dashboard, the last year we could see is 2021. I think it is. Uh, it must be a little bug because the, the graphs are automatically updated from the graph. So once you see them in Explore, uh, you should see them in Monitor. So uh, we'll take a look to see if there's an issue with the cache yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, please, please, yeah. Yes, so uh, Biliana, we'll, get, we'll try to get in touch uh, tomorrow or Monday, if that's okay. Oh, good. okay. Good. And just a, just a remark for Julia. Julia, I did not forget <laughs> to sign those papers, but they are stuck in some rector office, but I will push to sign them. I mean, if we are in the official uh, university website, it's as good as signing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's great. Okay, and I see there's another question. Yes, we have Which from- indicators are... mm -hmm. yes, yes. Sorry. Which Please indicators are the most common to be included into the dashboard? So at this point, every indicator that we have has been requested to be included. Um, so um, you can see, Julia, uh, do you have a dashboard yourself? Julia Caldoni? Uh, hi, um, Julia hi. speaking. No, uh, I don't have yet, but I was interested in uh, the service. So I was wondering what can be, a, what, it's the most common to be monitored and which indicators are the yes. most common, yes. We will, uh, we will add here a link to a public uh, dashboard. So
so that you can view. But just to uh, briefly discuss, every dashboard has an overview section that, that uh, includes some representative uh, trends and numbers from that dashboard. And then there's different sections on uh, research output, open science, and then uh, different, and open science inside has many uh, fairness and journal business models and so on. And then we have academic and the societal impact. Um, and so far, everyone has requested everything uh, that is available. So if you want to take a look at the dashboard that uh, Leonidas added now, and then we can have a call. May I ask which university you're from? I'm from the University of Bologna. And um, okay. Yeah, uh, we've been in touch with many people from Open Air lately, so Julia knows me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're we're just looking around because we are kind of trying to implement a few few new things for open science here at the university, and we were interested in monitor to monitor mostly um, how many data sets our researchers are producing more than publications because we have many different um, methodologies to, to check their publications and if they are open access and stuff like that. But still, we need to implement something uh, about data for data and data sets. And so we were interested in this call today to understand a little bit better about monitor. And then, yes, of course, we will get in touch. <laughs> uh, I, th I think this is also a very interesting use case for us, um, uh, the, the data sets and so on and how they show. So. Um, in, in any case, if, if if you want to discuss this further, it is very little effort from us to create a new dashboard. So we can see what we have. I'm okay. saying it because Leonidas will do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we, we, for me, very easy. <laughs> and uh, Leonidas is like the data guru. He will check your data sets and everything. So if that's something you're interested in, let's let's do it. Yeah, it would be really interesting. And thanks for sharing the dashboard. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Concerns? OK, then uh, I would like to thank uh, Katie for presenting and everyone else uh, for joining. I think Andre will send a feedback form and uh, the presentation or it will be posted on the website, Andre. Yes, yes, I will. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a good afternoon.